KHUL also has come out with its earnings. Uh, that also should flash for you on your screen very shortly. But remember, the expectation was that for HUL, it's going to be the volume and the margin picture, which will be very, very important. So we'll watch out for that as well. Uh, for now, we have just the initial numbers coming in as far as HUL is concerned. And on the bottom line, it's a bit of a miss. 2,600 thereabouts in terms of the profitability is what we were expecting. The actual number has come in at around 2,400 dot cross. I'm not sure if we have any other details, Trishti, at this point of time. At least I am not able to open the release for Hindustan Unilever. But the first number that we have doesn't seem very impressive. We are seeing a gradual recovery in market volume growth. FMCG market volumes grew in mid-single digits, led by urban. Rural market volume, which at one point in time was declining in double digit, has just turned positive in this quarter. Having said that, we need to be cognizant that these growths have come on back of volume decline in the base. If we were to look at market growth on a two-year CAGI basis, total volume growth is still marginally negative. With softening of inflation, competitive intensity in the market is increasing. Media deployment, which saw a steep reduction during the high inflationary period, has started normalizing and now is almost back to 2019 levels. We are also witnessing resurgence of small and regional players, many of whom had vacated the market during the peak of inflation. Now let me talk about HUL results for the quarter. We delivered a resilient and competitive performance with underlying sales growth of 7% and underlying volume growth of 3%. Talking about our bottom line performance, EBITDA margin at 23.6% improved 40 BPS year on year. Profit after tax before exceptional items at rupees 2,500 crores was up 9%. Net profit at 2,472 crores increased 8% year on year. Speaking about our market share performance, our growth was competitive with more than 75% of the business winning market share, both value and volume. On a two year basis, we continue to significantly outperform the market. Moving on to performance across our three segments, home care delivered yet another quarter of robust performance and grew 10% on a very strong base, balanced between volume and value. Beauty and personal care delivered a volume-led growth of 4%. Foods and refreshment grew 5% with near-flat underlying volume growth. Margins in all three segments remained healthy with home care at 18%, beauty and personal care at 26%, and foods and refreshment at 18%. Talking about some of our innovations, Dove Men Plus Care range, Induleka Soap, nor Chinese sauces, brew cold coffee, and a new range of water purifier by Purit were launched in this quarter. Surf Excelmatic liquid was relaunched with a superior formulation. Moving on to our margins, as we had indicated, we remained focused on building back our gross margin and stepping up ANP investments behind our brands. In this quarter, our gross margin improved sequentially by 140 BPS, and we stepped up ANP investments by 110 BPS versus March quarter 23. Speaking about the progress made on some of our key sustainability initiatives, during the quarter, we signed a strategic partnership with JSW Foundation to establish 10 new Suvida centers in Mumbai. These new centers will benefit 2 lakh people annually, saving 300 million liters of water over a decade and will run on solar energy. In association with Genpact, we launched BC an accelerator program to help scale businesses owned by minority and underrepresented groups in India. This program aligns with our ESG goal of increasing procurement from diverse businesses. FIKI has, center, <coughs> has set up a center for sustainability uh, and with leadership and partnership with HUL as a founding member. The center aims to accelerate India Inc.'s climate action in line with government's net zero commitments embodied in the Panchamrit framework. Now moving on to outlook. Near-term operating environment continues to be volatile with weather-related risk. We need to be watchful of the progress of monsoon and any impact of El Nino on cropping and rural demand. We expect market volumes to recover gradually due to high levels of cumulative inflation and the fact that consumption habits typically recover with a lag. In this context, we continue to manage our business with agility and take actions to ensure long-term 4G growth 
growth that is consistent, competitive, profitable, and responsible. Speaking, speaking specifically about outlook for next couple of quarters, price growth will further tail off with lapping of high prices in the base and sequential pricing reduction. If commodities remain where they are, we expect our price growth to be near flat or marginally negative in next couple of quarters. With, English, with inflation moderating, the competitive intensity is likely to go up further. We remain focused on providing superior value to our consumers, building back our gross margins, and investing competitively behind our brands. We expect to sustain our volume growth momentum.